What's up, guys? It's been a long time since I've actually been able to talk to you all in person. Well, no, not really in person, but in real time. Not really in real time either. There's probably a, a, a bit of a delay. But I'm actually streaming again, right? Exciting? Probably? Maybe? I don't know. Can you hear me? <laughs> That's sometimes a problem at the beginning of my streams. Sometimes uh, my mic isn't on. It's on, right? It's, it's probably on. Loud and clear. All right, cool, 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 cool. Well, welcome back, guys. Uh, to uh, those of you who are joining me for the first time in my streams, welcome for the very first time. I know that I don't stream very often, and usually when I do, I'm drawing. I don't usually stream video games, like, ever. But a lot of people have requested that I go through and check out the, uh, the Pokedex, the new Pokedex for Scarlet and Violet, and give my two cents about the new designs. Um, now, I just, last night, literally just last night, finished the full Pokedex. So I have seen all of the new Pokemon in this game. And if you haven't yet and you don't want to, obviously, get the hell out of here, finish the game, come back after uh, you've, you've seen all of your spoilers. But if you have already seen all of them or you don't care about spoilers, sit back and relax. And we're going to go through this whole Dex and uh, I'm going to give a a live Jack reaction to all of the new Pokemon. Now, of course, I've already seen all of these Pokemon before. This isn't going to be my first time seeing them. Um, but I didn't look at spoilers before the game was released. So while I was playing through this game, I got to experience all of these Pokemon for the first time. And I think that's really important to experience the new Pokemon for the first time in the game, in the context that the creators wanted you to experience them in. Um, because, you know... If you just look at, like, a really blurry PNG of, like, a screenshot from the game, it, it you don't get everything that the Pokemon is supposed to really be. Uh, so, I didn't look at the spoilers before the game came out because I wanted to see them uh, in the, the setting that uh, they were supposed to be seen in. So, that's, why our, uh, that's where we're going to be picking off here. Oh, you want to see a Panko Cam? Oh, that's, uh... uh you want to see a Panko Cam, huh? Oh, there she is. Not the, the best view, but it's the best we're going to get. Good girl. Thanks for coming over. All right. Yes, Panko is better than all the new dog Pokemon, but let's, you know, we'll get into that. We'll get there when we get there. All right. So we're going to go through the whole Pokedex. Uh, obviously, I'll skip over the ones that aren't new. I'll give my two cents about those anyway. Um, okay. So Sprigatito right off the bat. I mean, we all know about Sprigatito already. Um, very cute. I, you know, I think in a nutshell... It, there's nothing that grabs me about Sprigatito, you know? It's like the most, like, generic kind of concept for a fake Pokemon, or I guess a real Pokemon. It's just a grass cat. Not a lot to unpack there. Um, but of course, like all the starter evolutions, when you first see it, the, your thoughts immediately go to, oh, what is it going to evolve into? And I think what's unfortunate about Sprigatito is that's kind of all you think about. It's like, okay, but what is it going to turn into? You can't really appreciate it the way it is right now. And, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, the evolutions, uh, are not as good as they could be. I think we all saw this coming. What is this one even called? I don't actually haven't learned all their names yet. Floragato. Also kind of a, uh, an uninspired name, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I don't actually hate this. I think design-wise, it's cute. Um, you know, proportions are cute. Um, I'd say my biggest problem with it are the lack of colors. Uh, it's sort of just... I don't know, it's, it's very muddled. It, it reminds me of uh, last generation Star Evolutions. I don't know why they are so afraid to use a little bit more saturation. Like, I'm all for, like, a, a strong accent. You know, it's got the little pink in its eyes and on its neck. But it's so small. It's, like, so small. Um, I don't hate it. Uh, I'd say it's, uh, it's like a B for me. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like what everyone expected. You know, everyone knew it was going to turn into a furry. Like, we were all waiting for it. We knew it was going to come. It came. You know, it's not offensive in any way. It's just not the best it could be. And then Meow Scarada. Also, I don't love that name. It does not roll off the tongue very well. Um, I will give them this for Meow Scarada. It's not what I was expecting. I, I think, I mean, other than the fact that it's very humanoid. I was not expecting them to go, like, kind of jester carnival festival sort of look um and 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 feel free 
to uh, to correct me on, on my assumptions here, but it seems like they went for like a whole carnival kind of aesthetic with the starters, which is cool. But again, if they were going to go jester with it, why not add more color? It's so muddled. And I know it's a dark type, but there are dark types that have more interesting colors in it than this one. Um, I like the cape thing. Uh, shapes are good. Um, proportions, all right. Uh, it's, arms are a little awkward. They don't look like they've changed much from the second form. Overall, I'd give this one like another like B minus C plus. Um, it's just not my favorite. It, you know, this might be more of a personal thing. I don't think it's poorly designed. Um, but it, it, it is just not, it doesn't appeal to me too much, but I know people who like it. So I definitely don't hate it as much as I hate Rillaboom, but Rillaboom is a personal thing because I just wanted so much more for Rillaboom and I didn't get it. So unfortunate masquerade dancers and magicians. Yeah. I mean, that, that shows through. I see it. Um, it's not what I, and it's little floating leaf thing. I, I get it. Like it's doing a magic trick. Um, but it's, it seems like such an afterthought, the way it's just hanging there. I don't know. Um, I like how all the starters have, like, little floating accessories, but this is probably the, the laziest one, in my opinion. Um, yeah, and it does. Exactly. Uh, someone's saying in chat right now that it has more character when it's actually animated, using its moves. And that's absolutely true. Um, and I think that, uh, yeah, look, you can see that pop of color uh, on its paws there. Um, and again, that's what I was saying about how, like, you, you can't really judge these Pokemon fairly just by looking at, like, a screenshot of them. Um, you have to really see them in-game. You know, when you're petting them, when you're using them in battle, when you're walking around with them, it, it shares so much more of, of the, the personality of the Pokemon. So, uh, you know, not terrible. Uh, points, for, points for originality. I was not expecting this. I don't think anyone was expecting this specifically, but not terrible. Okay, now Fue Coco. Now, guys. S plus. I mean, double S, double plus. I, 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 when I first saw Fue Coco, when that trailer came out, I was so excited because in my head, I was like, holy shit. This is going to be the first time in years that there is a starter that caters to me. Now, I'm not saying the starters in the past have been bad, but they haven't been one that's like, really jack core and if you know me you know what jack core is but like fue coco is cute but it has that potential where it's like oh it's gonna be cool later on down the line right now it's cute and doofy but it's gonna look really cool down the line and of course i made the video where i speculated on what its evolution is gonna be i went like dinosaur um kind of crazy um yeah cheese gator i was thinking about hot peppers people were saying oh this has the shape of a pepper which it does. I don't know if that was a coincidence, intentional. It doesn't have anything to do with the final form. But either way, it's really cute. It ties in that fire design to it without just being like, it's on fire, um, which is great. It brings in some of the inspiration of the region of, of, of Spain and the Mediterranean. Adorable. Uh, and unlike Sprigatito, I feel like this design stands well on its own. Like, yes, the evolutions are good, but this as a design by itself is very strong. Like, to give you another example, Charmander. By itself, I don't love it. But because Char Charizard is good, I'll, I'll, I cut Charmander some credit because it's like, I cut it some slack because it's like, all right, Charmander not be, not, might, occur, not, might, might not be great, holy shit. But Charizard is cool. But on the opposite side of that spectrum, Fue Coco is an amazing design in and of itself. Then we have Crocolore and when I evolved my Foy Coco the first time and I saw this, I was completely thrown because I was like, okay, this is not going in the direction I thought it was going at all. Um, but I kind of love it. <laughs> like, it caught me so by surprise, but I was like, huh, I like it. And again, this was before I had seen the other evolutions, but I was like, oh, it's kind of got like a clown thing going on and it's got a fucking sombrero. Like, that's pretty great. It's very cute. And then I read its Pokedex entry and it said that it has an egg-shaped fireball on its head. And I was like, oh, I didn't read that as an egg, but yeah, it is. It's it's like an egg in a nest. Well, that's kind of interesting. Crocolore, I would say I don't love as much as Flaycoco or the final evolution, but I do like it. I think it's very cute. Um, and I think it's a good transition to the final form. 
which is Skeledurge. And when I got Skeledurge, when Crocolore evolved into Skeledurge, holy sh**, <laughs> I was so happy. I was so excited. And I knew right there, I was like, oh my god, I have a new favorite fire type starter. Like, it's been Charizard for so long. And now it's this. And I, I didn't even realize I was so like, you know, I was like, oh my god, it's so cool. It's a freaking skeleton crocodile. That's awesome. And I didn't even realize right away that it has a sidekick. It has a little firebird that it sings with. And I just love that. I mean, it, it works on so many different levels, right? Crocodilians, they sing, they vocalize. They literally have very unique songs that they sing during courtship. And that's something that people don't know a lot. Uh, people don't usually know about crocodilians is that they actually sing. They have beautiful vocal uh, uh, rituals. And, you know, you don't usually see that in crocodile designs. It's usually just like, you know, they're biting and they're savage and they're primal and they're evil. And this does have some savage look to it too, but it also has that other side of crocodilians where they would let a bird clean its teeth and then they bring that through more where like the bird actually sings with the crocodile and it's made out of fire and it's undead. It's, oh, it, it does. It has its potential to be its own Pokemon. Honestly, it's so cute. That little bird is so cute. And it's like two Pokemon in one. You have an awesome, badass, scary looking crocodile and then this tiny, cute little bird. They're both fantastic. The shiny is great. I don't know if anyone has seen the shiny yet, but it's like this nice saturated purple. Definitely gonna shiny hunt for one of those. Uh, and it is a very Claricore bird. You you know, it is a very Claricore core bird. Uh, it's an oster, as we, as we say. Um, it's adorable. I mean, if you ask me, there's something for everyone to love uh, with Skeledurge. 10 out of 10, fantastic starter. One of my favorite starters, and I have not said that about a new starter since Gen 3, so fantastic. All right, then we got Quaxley. Uh, Quaxley's very cute. I, I don't have a lot, to, like Sprigatito, I don't have a lot to say about Quaxley. I think it was very cute, resonated with me like so many of the first form starters. I was like, this is really cute. Can't wait to see where it goes. Um, I didn't know that the thing on its head was actually supposed to be gel. Like, it looks like jelly when you look at it in the 3D model, like when it's animated and the textures and everything, like it does look like gel. When you read its Pokedex entry, it's like, it secretes a gel from its feathers and then that, it makes like a little pomp, which is very cute. Um, Quaxley's adorable. I like it. Um, but you know, it's not like, it's not a Jack Core Pokemon. It's definitely a Claire Core Pokemon. Um, but I think it's cute. Then Quaxwell. Now, when Claire took Quaxley, because she really loved Quax, uh, Quaxley, but when she evolved it into Quaxwell, she was very disappointed. I'm going to be honest, I, I don't hate this one either. Um, it's awkward looking, but I mean, that's kind of standard for middle stage starter evolutions. They always kind of look awkward. Uh, I think that's an important part of their design. Um, but it's not awkward and poorly designed like I think, um, the hell is it, Drizzile, the water middle form from last gen. Um, Drizzile, I don't have anything good to say about Drizzile. This, I think, proportions are nice. Character shows through very clearly. Uh, colors are nice. Uh, this is, it doesn't have the same problem that I think, uh, the, uh, Sprigatito line has. I like the colors. I like the texture and the gel. And I like that the concept of it being a dancer is starting to show through. You know, it's, it's gradual, but I like it. Um, and, you know, again, it's not really to my taste. Um, but I don't have a huge problem with it. Um, I'd give that a solid B. Then, Quack Quavel. And now Claire refused to evolve her Quaxwell after it evolved. And she was like, I don't want to use this anymore. And I was like, come on, you got to evolve it just so I can see what the final form looks like. And she evolved it. And she was like, see, I hate this. I fucking hate it. And I was like, I, I don't hate it. Honestly, I don't hate it. Um, I, I, again, I love it so much more than Inteleon. There's a lot more character here. Um, I love the dynamism with the shapes. It's not just a big stick figure. Uh, and I love, again, how it has this uh, additional floating accessory. Um, it's 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 cool. I, I think the, the concept shows through very well. 
you know, it's definitely not, again, not to my taste, but I think it's well designed. Um, and it's exciting. And again, it's, it works into that carnival theme. We have the dancer, the magician, the singer. Um, I think it's cool. Um, I don't know what the shiny looks like for this one, actually. I hope that the shiny is cool, because um, I can imagine some cool shinies for this. Gay peacock duck. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's a good way to describe it. Although I, I was, I guess, I was interpreting it as feminine. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean not gay, I guess. Um, oh, and the other thing. I'm going to go back to Skeledurge for a second, because there's another thing I wanted to say about Skeledurge that makes me really happy and makes me one of my favorite starter Pokemon. The f***ing fan theory about how every fire starter needs to be from the Chinese Zodiac, it's dead. It's finally f***ing dead. We don't have to hear people saying, oh, it, it, it has to be a, a horse or a cow. No, it's a crocodile. It can be whatever you want it to be. Don't f***ing start with me, dragon bullshit. It's a crocodile. The Zodiac is dead. Thank God. I mean, like, listen, if you, like, it's, it's a cool, like, coincidence. But I've been saying for years, the Game Freak doesn't give a shit about that theory. It's just been a coincidence. I mean, think about it. The Chinese Zodiac is made up of 12 animals that can encompass pretty much every kind of animal design you could possibly conceive. Of course, that they, they, they could that coincidence could happen. But at least finally now, it's just over and done with. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. Um, it breathes fire. It's a dragon. Yeah, they're still... They're, they're clinging on to it. They need it. I don't know why they need it so badly. Ugh. They... I don't know why people need it so badly. But if it's still a dragon, then are they duplicating it? Because then what's Charizard? I don't know. I, it's done. I'm glad it's done. People are still going to cling to it. I don't care. It's completely done. I don't give a sh**. Uh, Lechonk. I've already talked about Lechonk in videos. I love it. Perfection. Adorable. I love a good piggy. And this is a really good piggy. And the shiny is fantastic. And you know me. I always love a good shiny. Uh, and this shiny is exactly what I wanted it to be. Pink and white. Adorable. Oink Cologne. Now, this caught me off guard. I was not expecting this at all. And it's very different from what I drew. But let me just say this. I like it. I like it a lot. In fact, I might like it better than what I drew. And the main reason is, I just think it's more creative. I think it's a more unique perspective on pigs. Because, yes, we know the pigs can smell... We know that pigs can smell stinky. We know that pigs have a good sense of smell. But what if a pig communicated by smelling really good? And I just imagine how soft its fur is. Like, really thin, fine, like, velvety fur. I love that it has uh, two different gender forms. Uh, you know, they're subtle, but they're still really cute. And <laughs> I just think it's great. I played through my whole game with my pig. I named it King Ranch. Again, I'm definitely getting the shiny because it's adorable. Um, I just like it. I, I like it a lot. Um, I just, I, I like the idea of like a, a suave, um, fashionable pig. It's just not something that we see very often. You When you think pig, you think gritty, you think dirty, you think aggressive and hostile. No, this one is... Yeah, I love. Yeah, exactly. I like the idea of applying beauty to an animal that is not usually associated with it. I think it's creative. I think it's well done, and I think it's probably one of my, if not my favorite, Route One normal type. Right? This is the Route One normal type. This is definitely my favorite. This line, fantastic. Tarantula. I mean, this guy speaks for himself. Adorable. I mean, fantastic. Cute. Clever idea. And it works really well in the setting of this open world where you see them hanging from trees. You know, I considered that a lot when I was looking at these Pokemon where it's like, they were designed to play into the environment that you see them in. Now, of course, this environment runs at 4 FPS and, you know, the graphics are terrible and the game crashes all the time. But at the same time, the designs are still strong and they're designed uh, with the open world in mind. Um... And I think it's great. I think it's very cute. I love how... I mean, I always love when they can make spiders look cute. Because I think spiders are cute. Um, but most people do not. So, it's always cute, uh, go, cool when uh, they make a spider look cute. Now, Spidops. Wasn't expecting this. 
again, caught me off guard. And that's one of my favorite things that Pokemon design can do, uh, is really catch me off guard. I think it's pretty clever. Um, I like that it looks like a, a spool of thread. And it kind of looks like a, an automaton, like it's an old-fashioned, like, wooden puppet. Um, and uh, that kind of plays into the whole ogre spider thing, which, you know, just by looking at the face of it, it kind of looks like an ogre spider. Um, and then that also ties into, like, in Japanese mythology, how ogres play a role in, uh, in uh, fairy tales. And you can kind of imagine it as a puppet on stage being pulled by threads, strings... Some fun concepts being married there. Um, I think it's very cute. Uh, I actually thought it was um, bug grass when I first saw it, just because of the colors and because the mouth parts kind of look like leaves, but it's just a bug type. Um, but I think it's cute. Um, the, ooh, does its head spin all the way around? I didn't notice that before. Oh no, I thought its head was spinning all the way around. I also like how when you see it in the wild, it like makes those like webs, like it actually spreads out its webs. It's that animation is not in the Pokedex for some reason, but I like the way you uh, you can knock them down from trees and then they run at you with their webs. Again, considering how it will work in an overworld, which is something that Pokemon hasn't have to hadn't had to do before, um, I think that's very well designed. Nimble. Let me see if I can, like, replicate that, that sprite that I have. Oh, love this guy. Very cute. I like how it kind of mixes, like, sci-fi into nature. Um, and I, I gotta say something. I don't, as much as I think spiders are cute, I don't think crickets are cute. Crickets freak me out. It's, like, the only bug that I have a problem with. I don't mind bees. I don't mind spiders. I don't mind, eh, cockroaches are kind of gross. I wouldn't want them in my house, but they don't freak me out. Crickets freak me out. I do not like crickets. I do not like Weta's or, or, oh, in my, I was just at my mom's house for the holidays and she gets these giant f***ing camel crickets. They're the grossest thing in the world. I don't know why they're grosser than spiders to me. I think it's because they leap. Anyway, I can go on about how much I don't like crickets, but instead I'll just talk about how much I like Nimble. Very cute. Um, and I love how they did, they worked in the back legs to make it look like a jet pack, but then when it jumps... The legs fold back. Is it going to show that animation? Oh, no, it's not. Why doesn't it show that animation? Um, but it's great. And then the evolution, again, com caught me completely off guard. They went like Sentai, Kamen Rider, like, robot mech suit. And, oh, again, they don't show the animation. This is my, this is my biggest problem with the game is that the Pokedex doesn't show all of their animations. But I love the animation where it extends its legs all the way back and then punches. Ugh. Oh, it's fantastic. This is our first bug dark type. Um, and it's awesome. This is a great bug dark type. Um, yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. I kind of wish that its shiny was more gold. It's like just yellow. It's like a matte yellow. Um, because I'm making a gold team because gold textures look so fucking good in this game. Um, and uh, I wish this one was gold because it would have definitely gone on there. Um, but very good. Low kicks. Low kicks. All right. Palmy. Now, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you guys. When they released like the first couple of Pokemon in the first trailer, I forgot every single time that Palmy was one of those Pokemon. People would be like, oh, and the electric type? And I'd be like, there was an electric type? And they're like, yeah, Palmy. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Palmy. Like, I, there's nothing wrong with it, I think, from a design perspective. It's cute. Um, make for a hell of a great plush. Uh, it's a great Pika clone. I never really care that much about the Pika clones, though. Uh, Claire is the Pika clone connoisseur. She loves the Pika clones. And she doesn't love this one. So, as far as I'm concerned, it's just, you know, middle of the pack. Mid, as the kids would say. Thought it would be an ice type because it looks like a parka. It does look like a parka. Oh, that would have been really cute. But no, instead we got our first electric fighting type. And now this one. So I tell people when they ask for tips about how to design Fakemon, I always say don't don't succumb to the add-on syndrome, uh, which I define as just the first stage, but just put something else on it. This is even less than that. This is the first stage, but it stands up. This is like Gen 1 design conventions here. Uh, congratulations on the shiny Palmy, by the way. Um, and that's a fantastic name. 
Uh, but going back to this, uh, I, I, again, I don't hate it. Like, if this was it, it's fine. The only reason I don't like it is because, like, I saw it. You know, your your rival has it. Nimona has it. And I was like, wait, is that a different form of Palmy? Like, is there a form where it, like, stands up? No, it's... This is an evolution. Um, I don't... Uh, again, I don't hate it. I just... That Gen 1, like, just, like, adding stuff on to a Pokemon and calling it an evolution or just, like, making it bigger. I don't know. I don't know why they gave it an evolution. But don't worry. It has another evolution. Also, Les... <laughs> Les Bunny? Am I reading that? No, it's Les... Lesbnoy? I'm, really, I'm reading that as Lesbunny. Lesbunny Mom, uh, thank you for uh, the raid. Um, okay, so, and then it gets another evolution. Uh, it blew my mind. And again, I, I don't dislike this, but why does it? why is it a three-stage evolution? And Pommel, that's true. Why isn't it called Pommel? Yeah, it, it, Pommy, Pommel, Pommel, I don't know. This thing just screams Gen 1 to me. Uh, in, like, the, the worst way. Um, again, I don't think it's ugly. I don't think it's a bad design. I just... The fact that it's just, like, small mouse... Small mouse standing up. Bigger mouse standing up. And it, it adds a finger. Each stage gets another finger. It's, like, the, the laziest form of add-on syndrome. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, honestly, Palmy and Palmod, it didn't need a middle form. It just didn't. Like, it really feels like maybe they designed Palmy and Palmot, and then they were like, oh, we gotta put more Pokemon in the deck, smack a middle form in there. Which, again, makes it feel like Gen 3, uh, Gen 1. Um, yeah, exactly. Pikachu is better designed in its terms of its evolution than this, and that's a Gen 1 Pokemon. Like, Raichu looks related to Pikachu, but it looks like an evolution. It's not like Seal and Dugong, or Grimer and Muck. Like, it's not just the same thing, but bigger. And this is just the same thing, but bigger. So, I don't know. I think just for that alone, I give it a lower score. Again, not a bad design. It's just kind of disappointing that that's an evolution. Okay, now Wooper. Fantastic. I mean, they knew what they were doing when they picked the first few Pokemon to tease. Like, they knew everyone was going to love Paldean Wooper. And everyone does. Um, if you don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's adorable. I mean, it's just Wooper again. But, you know, different color, and it's got the crossbone gills, which I think is very cute. And I talked about that when I designed my evolution for Wooper, which was very far off from what we got. And Clodsire... <laughs> now, Claire loves Wooper, and when it evolved into Quags Clodsire, I immediately was like, You love this. And she does. And I love it too. It's... F oh, shiny Clodsire, nice. Little blue blueberry boy. Love this thing. So adorable. I love that they decided, you know, just go full doof with it. Just, it's a f***ing potato. Um, but I also do love that it kept that... Oh, it's not doing it! Again, what's with this Pokedex? Put in all the animations. It's bullshit. Ugh, it doesn't have the animation where the ribs come out. I like that they kept the skeletal theme just a little bit. And it's got the ribs that come out of the back. You know, it's a little creepy. Um... <laughs> you really did hacking inflate it. Um, but I I think it's adorable. I love... I I wish the Pokedex would show it, but I love that the the little spikes come out of the back. Uh, I imagine them being squishy. I guess they're like kind of gills too. I don't know. They kind of remind me of those salamanders that have frills. Um, but it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. I want to eat it. Doesn't it look like an eclair? Ugh. Yeah, you, they, you know they're going to make a pillow of it. In fact, I saw someone made their own pillow, you know, with that really soft, stretchy material. And they were just made one. And they auctioned it. And it sold for like $7,000. Um, it's already sold, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just made for that. It's adorable. I absolutely love it. Um, and I love that it's still kept a little... Because uh, I remember people saying when I designed my evolution that they were like, oh, they completely ditched the skull and crossbone thing. But they didn't ditch it. You just didn't know it at the time because you could only see this screenshot of it. But when it attacks, not it doesn't show it, but when it attacks, the little spikes come out of its back, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
Tandem mouse. <laughs> Tandem mouse. I mean, when when people, I fucking love that. Look at this little fuck. Look at this absolute shit eater. Sorry, shit eaters. They're literally saying they, they they want you to shovel it in. Oh my god, they're such little pieces of shit. Uh, but I love them. The I, I love them. They're fantastic. It's so cute. I remember when people were saying like they they in the one trailer they showed this on the mini map, and I was like, there's no way. That's not a Pokemon. And of course, like so many Pokemon, the first time you see it, you're like, that doesn't look like a Pokemon. And it doesn't. But guess what? It is a Pokemon. And I love it. <laughs> it's so great. And like with every new generation, it expands the definition of what can be a Pokemon. Because whether or not you think it looks like a Pokemon, it is a Pokemon. And now you can design something that's as crazy as this. Or, shall I say, as crazy as this. This is fantastic. I mean, people are like, oh, it's just the same thing, but more. Pokemon is running out of ideas. Guess what? That's always been in Pokemon. F***ing Doug Trio, Magnezone, uh, Combi. Like, it's just, like, that's a Pokemon staple, just having the same thing more than one time. And I love the name, Mousehold. It works on a couple different levels, right? Because it's like a household, but they also hold on to each other. Mousehold. I... It's a, it's adorable. It's fantastic. Yeah, and and this is my favorite part about it because I love rare Pokemon. There's a chance, and I, I haven't found it yet, but there's a chance when you evolve it that it only has one baby. Oh yeah, someone's bringing it up. They only have one baby sometimes. And I love that, you know, because it's like the super rare shiny. And this shiny is like almost, you wouldn't even notice it's shiny. But, um, you know, that's like the super rare if you can get it. With just one baby and it's also shiny like ah oh, so cute and i i know it's busted that you know it's in in competitive it's busted i don't give a shit. i don't play competitive um but it's adorable i i fucking love it fantastic very cute 10 out of 10. okay fido <sighs> let's talk about fido this is another one of the ones that they first released and i was like eh. you know it's a cute idea the name is cute I get it, because, like, I, I think about, like, my dog has a lot of wrinkles, and I imagine, like, squeezing the folds on my dog's back, and then it's, like, dough. Cute idea. Execution left a little to be desired for me. Um, but the evolution. Doc's bun. I love this. I love this so much. Absolutely love this. I love it so much. This is so cute. And I think I like it, you know... A lot of people with dogs, they get a bias if it looks like their dog. This looks a lot like the dog I grew up with. Um, he's a dachshund mix, and he's got a big poofy chest. Um, he looks a lot like this, except he's evil, uh, and he bites people. Um, but this is fantastic. I'm really glad the evolution for Fido is cute, because I didn't love Fido. Um, but Doc's one is... Oh. Look at him! Look at this little guy! I love him. I love Doc's bun. I also love that its cry is literally just a bark. Should have been fire type. Yeah, that would have been cool if it was fire fairy. I thought it was going to be a third form that was like burnt and that would be fire fairy. Because like it's like raw, then well baked, and then over baked. Um, but it's just a two stage. But I'm fine with it because it's cute. Small of. Adorable. I was very curious to see what small of would look like when it evolved. Because I did my fan theories for it. People were saying that they liked the official Pokemon better than my design. I have to agree. Dolive. Adorable. Very cute. I like it a lot. Again, I, I relate to this big shiny head that doesn't have as much hair as it probably should. I think it's cute. I like, you know, it's, it's one of those Pokemon that's really just like, no thoughts, head empty. Love it. And now, what is the Arboliva? <laughs> Completely caught off guard by this one. Was not expecting this at all. But I like it. Again, I, I like the Pokemon that look like nothing we've ever seen before. Um, and I like it a lot. I don't actually know what the shiny looks like. Um, but depending on what it looks like, I might shiny hunt this. Because I like it a lot. Uh, yeah. 
not what I was expecting. I like this way more than what I designed. Um, it is, it's literally art. I really like it. Um, yeah, it just, it, it bucks all of the, the stereotypes for what we were expecting. Or, and like, that's what I drew, you know? I kind of drew what I think everyone was expecting. Um, and I'm so glad it wasn't that. You're like, I was, you know, I would have been happy if it did look like that. But I'm so glad it's something more creative than what I came up with. Squawk ability. I don't give a shit about this thing. It's like, I don't fucking, I don't care. It's just a fucking bird. Sorry, that's, that's aggressive. I just, I don't like it. It's not that I, it's not even that I don't like it. I actually am more mad about how little I care about it. Honestly, like the, you could just take this out of the Pokedex and I wouldn't bat a fucking eye. I don't care. Okay, some new Pokemon here. What is this? I don't even remember what it is. Knackley. I was very confused by this when I first saw it. I really didn't understand the concept. I didn't dislike it, but I was confused. I wasn't sure what I was looking at it. I had a friend who said, oh, it's like one of those magnet goos. I had another person who thought, a friend who thought it was a mushroom. Um, but then when I found out it was salt, because I saw the name and I was like, oh, that's a clever name because it looks like the, the chemical combination, the chemical, uh, what do you call that? Periodic table name for, for salt, for sodium. I think it was kind of clever. Then the evolution, Knackle Stack. I mean, I'm sure the meme has already been made. Looks like a Minecraft mob. And this is one of those Pokemon that I'm sure people don't like because, I don't know, it's too weird. But I love when they get weird with it. And, you know, again, it's a Pokemon that we've never seen before. And it's actually very clever. I think it's very cool. Um, again, it's, it's not really to my taste, but I think it's a very cool design. And I like, again, that Pokemon is taking things in new directions. You know, because the three-stage rock type, that's a trend that we see pretty often in new games. I think there's almost always a three-stage rock type. So it's hard to get creative with that. Salt as a mineral, you know, how it forms in those cube crystals. I think it's cool. And I also love, it reminds me of when I was a kid, there was this um, uh, Magic School Bus cartoon where they go inside a, a cake and they look at all of the components that make up a cake and the salt crystals were all cube shaped. And uh, that's what it's making me think of. Um, and then Garganackle, I absolutely love. This one I do love and I think is well designed. Personally, I, I really like it and I think it's really well designed. I think it, I mean, I love salt, you know, just me, my, I, I'm a salt lover. I would lick this thing. I would just sit on top of it and just look, like take little bits off and just eat it. I'd get a little pretzel and i just like punch my Garganackle and have some salt come down on it. Salt Golem, fantastic. And yeah, it's one of the more unique staple rock lines, if that's what you want to call them. Um, and I like it a lot. Look at it. I love the way it moves, too. I love it. Fantastic. Persian. Now, here's what I'm going to say about Persian. I don't know how many people noticed this. They actually remodeled Persian in this game. I've always said that I would like Persian more if its 3D model wasn't so awkward looking. They fucking changed it. They actually changed Persian. Oh, thank you for the hand stretch. I'll... Oh, that was a good hand stretch. Ah. Um, yeah, I, um, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm not sure if they remodeled any other Pokemon. They did make some changes to other Pokemon, though. Um, but I love that they remodeled it because I like it so much more now. Um, and anyway, that's all I have to say about Persian. I, I, I don't hate Persian, but I hated it in its 3D model. But they made it look so much better in this game. And I really appreciate that. Annihilate. Had no idea that they were just going to throw Primeape in Evolution in this. Not even like a regional Evolution, just straight up in Evolution. Which I like, by the way. I like that we're going back to the trend of giving old Pokemon new Evolutions. Um, I'm a big fan. And I like this a lot more than Primeape. I don't love it. It fixes a lot of the problems I have with Primeape. You know, it does a lot better job with breaking up negative space. Much more interesting silhouette. There's much more of a concept here. Um, the concept behind this is absolutely insane, that it got so angry that it, like, transcended. It kind of, like, went Super Saiyan. Um, very interesting. I, the more I look at it, the more I like it, honestly. Um, so, you know, whatever. I hope it's shiny is, is yellow. I hope it's shiny is, like, Super Saiyan yellow. That would be really funny. Charcadet. Adorable. This is a very cute design. Definitely got some Digimon energy, you know, uh... Very, um, 
very cluttered. You know, it's it's got a lot going on, which I think is what makes it feel like a Digimon. Um, you know, a lot happening in very little space, but not in an inconsiderate way. Like it's it's not done terribly. Um, yeah, and I like I like that it has the blue flame and the red flame. Um, you know, this is cool. I like me a good split Evo and both of these evolutions. Um, my only critique about Armor Rouge, Armor Rouge is my favorite of the two. My only critique about it is that I wish, because again, the textures in this game look so nice on the Pokemon, but for some reason, Armor Rouge is like plastic. Like its armor looks plastic. And I, I guess that was intentional because, you know, they, they can, they can render those textures, but I don't know why it's, it's armor is so matte, you know? Um... Yeah, I don't know why its armor isn't shiny. This one, the the Cerule Edge too, is it's got like this matte color. Like again, I think it's a good design. It's just interesting to me that they introduced these textures into the game, and the Pokemon that literally has armor in the name doesn't have some armor texture to it. But either way, don't dislike it. I you know it's not entirely to my taste, but I like it. Tad bulb. God damn. God damn this good thing. This is adorable. I mean, it's so cute. Clever idea. I, I think it's... <laughs> I You know, again, it's one of those things that I'm sure people will say it doesn't look like a Pokemon. But it... Whatever. It is a Pokemon. And it's cute. And I like it has the, def the, you know, the decoy eyes. So cute. And, you know, I mean... Belly Bolt. I mean, the name says it all. It's adorable. It's a fucking dumbass, stupid, squishy. You want to punch it in the head and it won't even feel it. But I do like it. I like it. It's cute. I think I like it. I wouldn't like it as much if Claire didn't like it so much, but I do still like it. I think it's very cute. I like that it's electric type, too. I want to punch it. Don't you want to punch it? You kind of want to punch it. Watrol. This is, again, I think... With this, I noticed there were a lot more Pokemon in this Pokedex than we've gotten in the past. And it's because they throw in Pokemon like this, you know. There's not a lot of concept behind this. It's not poorly designed by any means, but it reminds me of Gen 3. Or like Gen 4 or Gen 2 or Gen 1. You know, the early Gens. Where they, they had much bigger Pokedexes. And there were a lot more Pokemon that didn't have a ton of concept behind them. But they were still well designed. Um, and, you know, kind of to pad out the Pokedex. And I think Watrol is one of those Pokemon. It's it's very cute. Um, it's pretty much just a cartoon animal. Um, but it's cute. Like, I don't dislike it. And I like Kilowattrol a lot. Um, I kind of wish that its throat actually expanded like a frigate bird. Because obviously it's just a cartoon frigate bird. Um, but either way, I like it. You know, it's not super creative. Um... But again, it pads out that Pokedex and it gives a little bit more uh, diversity to the whole uh, generation as a whole. And I appreciate that. I like it. It does expand? Oh, I've never seen it expand. And of course it doesn't do that in the Pokedex. Okay, I'm glad it expands. Alright, Evolutions. Oh yeah, Eevee does kind of look like it's been remodeled. Its eyes look different. They look smaller. Now I'm looking for those remodels. I don't look at the evolutions too much. Oh yeah, Vaporeon looks a little different. It's got like a little arch to its back. Or maybe I just don't look at them too much. Oh yeah, Jolteon is different too. It's cocking its head. Oh wow, that's interesting. Oh, its legs are bent kind of weird though. Those legs don't look right. But yeah, wow, it's cocking its head. That is different. Flareon is a little different, too. They made it less tubby. That's interesting. Huh. Yeah, Espeon. Ooh, Espeon looks better. It's got a little bit more definition to, like, the neck and the chest. It's got more of a curve in the stomach. And its head is pointier. I didn't notice these. Yeah, its its head is... It, the ears come back a little bit. I like it a lot more. Espeon's always been my favorite evolution, but... I like it a lot more now. Yeah, Umbreon looks a little bit different too. Its stance is different. And again, it's a little slimmer. Hmm. 
Leafeon looks more or less the same, if I'm remembering correctly. Its face looks a little different. I don't like Leafeon. Glaceon looks a little different, too. Oh, they kind of put a fucking dump truck on Glaceon. Does it always look like that? Is that just me, or does it just have a fucking big ass? That's a lot of Glaceon back there. Is that just me? Maybe that's just me. Sylveon. Sylveon also looks skinnier. They all they all started running. They got they 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 the trimmed. Glaceon! I really like that this is first time chat. Glaceon. What's my opinion on the human designs? I like most of them. Uh but that would have to be another video. No, I know where that's going, Carquino T. All right, the Dunsparce. I think my reaction to this is exactly what they wanted people's reaction to Dunsparce's evolution to be. Now, I was making jokes with my friends about Dunsparce getting an evolution in this gen because Girafferig got an evolution, and that was one of those Pokemon that everyone wanted an evolution for. It was one of those Pokemon that people were like, it needs an evolution, it needs an evolution. Dunsparce was another one of those Pokemon where people were like, it needs an evolution. I never thought it did. So for me, the Dunsparce is kind of like a little slap in the face to people who are like, Dunsparce needs an evolution. Okay, here's an evolution for you. Fucking Dun Dunsparce. <laughs> it's a little bit more than Dunsparce. I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And I love that again, it has a rare form where it can have three segments. Uh, I obviously haven't found one yet. But it's it's great. It's like it's like a people who like wanted Dunsparce to turn into like like I designed that evolution for it, which isn't even that crazy. But I've seen evolutions for it where it's like a giant cobra or like a dragon and like oh it's badass. No fucking Dunsparce. Look at this thing. It's a little dumbass little worm snake Tatsugori, whatever those things are called. Uh, you know those little Japanese cryptids. It's a it's a fucking meme Pokemon. Its evolution should be a meme, and it is. Uh, I I love that. I I think it's fantastic. It's I think exactly what Dunsparce needs. And again, I think it's exactly what Pokemon fans who are like Dunsparce needs an evolution. It's what they needed too, because this is just like this is it. This is what Dunsparce should evolution should be like. It's just the Dunsparce. It's a joke, and I love it. And now we got Ferrigarath. I love this. This is a great evolution. So now this is kind of the opposite, where I don't think people expected a Girafferig evolution to be kind of a little more on the badass side, you know, a little bit more monstrous. Um, but it's great. I think this is a really clever design. I love how it plays up the whole tail thing. I mean, Girafferig was one of those Pokemon where it's like it's so little attention was drawn to it. It's like always been so enigmatic, and I love how enigmatic this feels too. Um, and I love how it also feels more like a giraffe, actually tall. Because giraffe already kind of has, like, the proportions of a horse. You know, it doesn't really feel like a giraffe. Um, for a giraffe, does. And I love how tall it is in the game. Alright, Mastiff. This is one of the only Pokemon in this generation that I can say wholeheartedly, I do not like it. I don't like anything about this. I get the whole bit that it's, like, a little, like schoolyard bully kind of thing. I just don't like it. It is just ugly. I... It's worse than the Duck Hunt Dog. It's... it's I, I hate its hair. I think I wouldn't hate it as much if it wasn't for the hair. The, like, blonde mop of hair. I don't like Pokemon with hair. I've said this before. I, uh, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I, I get that it's supposed to be ugly. Um... You know, that's that's totally intentional. Like, I know it's supposed to be ugly. But I don't like it. It doesn't do it well. In my opinion. Um, yeah. But now, on the flip side, my boss, Jeff, uh, as much as I don't like that name, I actually do like this. Um, I think part of it is bias because of the story. You know, it plays a big role in, in Arvin's story. Um, and you get attached to it. Um, but I do think it's, it's, it's much better designed. Like, again, it is supposed to look ugly, but this does it in a good way. I also like how tame it looks. 
uh, before it opens its mouth. And then when it opens its mouth, it's got like massive fucking chompers. Um, I like it. Uh, I think it's, I think it's pretty cute. Not cute. It's not cute, but I think it's well done. Shrewdle. Another one from Gen, Gen 9 that I don't like. I get it. I get the concept. I kind of like the gas mask thing they're doing with it. I get it. You know, shrews are like the only venomous mammal. Uh, I just, I feel like they designed Graphii and then they were like, it needs a first form, which I don't think it does need a first form, but they decided to give one anyway. And like, I, I don't know. I don't like when you look straight at it. It just looks like a cartoon man's face, like a gross, like 1940s cartoon man. Um, it is, it is evil. It is the, the, the creature is dubious in nature. Um, yeah, I don't like it. It's just, that's just me. Uh, Graphii, on the other hand, I like. Um, it's, it's, I, I, I should say, it's not quite to my taste, but I do think it's well designed. Um, I actually don't have this shiny. Claire found this shiny again, just spontaneously, but she traded it to me so I could have it in my Pokedex. Um, and then I traded it back. I like it. I, I think this has a great concept behind it. I think that's why it was one of the first Pokemon they uh, teased. Um, I think, you know, the whole idea of this street artist meets I.I. meets uh, spray paint meets kind of vigilante. It's got like a Spider-Man thing going on with its face. I like the gas mask. I like the implied hood. I think it's very clever. Um, I don't personally love it. Uh, but I think it's a very well, do well done design. Um, Zangus. Where are its claws? Am I? Wait a minute. Oh, there they are. Oh, they retract. That's new. That's another change they've made to a Pokemon model. In older games, its claws did not retract like that. Huh. Okay. They must have changed this model. Oh yeah, they like fold under its hands. Interesting. Very cool. That's new. They added that in this generation. I like that. I like going... Now that I play League of Legends a lot, the, the concept of going back and revising your old character designs and making them canon... You know, making the revisions canon. I like that. This is this is a good direction. Again, I don't really love Zangoose, but that was a, a nice little touch they added in this gen. Now, Tauros. This was interesting because when I first saw Tauros, I was like, I was like excited because my friend said, oh, there's a regional Tauros variant. And I was like, that's interesting. And then I saw it and I was like, wow, this doesn't fix any of the problems I have with Tauros. But the fact that it's got two different forms is very interesting, and I, I like these forms. I, I think they do fix the problems that I have with Tauros. They actually do something with the the initial concept. Um, and uh, I like the shape language in this a lot, too. So, I would say that if it hadn't been for the other forms, I would have thought this was a waste. Um, but uh, I actually kind of like them. Unfortunately, the shiny is terrible. Which is, uh, you know, always a detractor for me. F this thing. I absolutely hate this line. Bramblin. This is another one where I kind of felt like they wanted to pad out the decks a little bit. Like, it's not bad by any extent of the imagination. Again, it's another one of those Pokemon that they're trying new things with, and I appreciate that. But when I saw its evolution, I was like, huh, yeah, they're just kind of padding out the decks. And I don't have a problem with that. I think it's okay to have some Pokemon that are a little less complex in their design or in their concepts it's not bad i i really like it actually and this is another one of those ghost types in this gen that's like has a really weird lore behind it um the fact that it's like an actual human spirit in a reanimated tumbleweed um but i like it i like the asymmetry um i like how empty it is um and yeah i like how it looks at you from every angle no matter how you look at it I like it. Again, it's not quite to my taste. It's kind of a forgettable one, but I like that it pads out the decks, and I like that it does new things. Toad's cool. 
I can't not laugh looking at this thing. When we first, I was playing the game with my friends when it first came out, and we got a raid with this in the silhouette, and we were like, is that Tentacool? Is that a new Pokemon? What is that? And when we saw it, we were like, get the f*** out of here. Whimsical fella. I love that description for it. It really is a whimsical ass motherfucker. It's a shroom walker. I like it. I played through this whole game with this fucking thing and its evolution, which I also like. Um, I think they're very cool. I like the whole convergent evolution thing. Um, I think it's a cool concept. I hope they keep doing this in newer generations. My only problem with this and what I was hoping for in its evolution was that the decoy eyes that we see on Tentacruel, I was hoping those would be the actual eyes and it just loses the Gen 1 eyes because I hate those Gen 1 eyes. That's my only problem with this thing. But overall, I love it. And I love the texture. Um, it really screams mushroom. And I like also how the uh, the typing is really ambiguous with this too. I love ambiguously typed Pokemon. Grass ground. Probably would have been my last guess. Oh, is the shiny good? I might shiny hunt it. I don't know what color it is, but I love the colors in it already. So I'm hoping the shiny is good. Tropius. Here's another one that they changed the model for. Guys, I mean, oh, it's pink. <gasps> oh, that's fantastic. I'm really glad the shiny is pink. But anyway, let's talk about Tropius for a second. Love Tropius. I've always loved Tropius. Hated the way it looked in the 3D games. The way it fucking hovered without flapping its wings. Not only is it standing now, but when it flies, it flaps its wings. It's a huge W. I mean, anyone who loves Tropius knows how weird it was to see it gliding like that in Gen 3, uh, in Gen 6. And it finally is standing. And then when it flies, it flaps its wings. Ah, oh, I love it. They did that for a lot of the flying type Pokemon, actually. They gave them standing versions, you know, standing modes. Um, like when they're in your... Um, in your picnic or whatever, they're actually walking around. That's some that's some good effort. I would actually, and I do, I actually prefer that they spent more time remodeling some of these Pokemon than they did on, like, overworld textures and stuff. That, to me, is more important. And I'm glad they did it, because I love Tropia so much more now. Ad adorable. These are the high-quality animations promised. They really are, though. Like, that was the meme in the last gen, but... This actually makes such a big difference. They completely reanimated this whole thing. They gave it two sets of animations for when it's flying and for when it's it's on the ground. I love Tropius. I'm breeding for a shiny in this gen. It's finally worth it because it stands. I'm so happy. It really is a Tropius VGU. I mean, Cloth. How could you not love Cloth? Adorable. I thought I was going to use it in my playthrough, but... I got so used to seeing it after, you know, because it was teased in all of the trailers. It just, I felt like I wanted to use a Pokemon that I hadn't seen yet. But I absolutely love Cloth. Oh, Shiny Cloth is blue. Might hunt that. Uh, definitely going to do a crab team with this bad boy. Also love that it's not a water type. I love that we keep getting more crabs, and I especially love that they're not all water types. Always fantastic. This f***ing thing. I don't know how I feel about this thing. I feel like I want to say that I appreciate that they're trying something very new here, but something about it just feels weird and awkward to me. Like, I get the concept, and I like how it's weird, but I just wish it looked a little bit different. <sighs> puntable! It is. It is definitely puntable. I gotta say, I part of the reason I don't like it is because... You fucking step on these things all the time when you're running around. You can't see them. They're so small. And they start a battle. And you're like, fucking get out of my way. Or you see them from a distance and you think it's a gimme ghoul. And you run up to it and you're like, oh, it's not a gimme ghoul. But it's too fucking late. I gotta battle this thing. I don't know. I don't love it. And then, you know what? Here's what I gotta say about this. Everyone expected that the first grass fire type was going to be a hot pepper. And I'm a little disappointed that Game Freak actually did that. Because if there's one thing that Pokemon always does consistently, it surprises me. And it did it in this gen too. But this is not a surprise. I mean, the design is certainly surprising because this thing is fucking weird looking. 
But the fact that they made the first fire grass type just a hot pepper is a little disappointing to me. I came up with that idea. Everyone came up with that idea. And I'm not going to say it doesn't look like a Pokemon. I think, I think that's a weak critique. Because again, I like Pokemon that don't look like anything we've seen before. Uh, because it, it means that you can, in the future, more things can look like Pokemon. I think every new generation, people are going to say, it doesn't look like a Pokemon. And, you know, it doesn't because it wasn't a Pokemon before you saw it. And now it is. But it is a Pokemon, so how can it not look like a Pokemon? It literally is a Pokemon. That's not my critique about this. My, my biggest complaint about this is that it's just too easy. I expected more. Relor. Love this guy. I love it. I I didn't think they had the fucking stones to do a dung beetle, but I love it. I you know it's not actually dung; it's mud and stuff. And I'm gonna say a little bias about why I like this one so much. The shiny. The shiny is another shiny that changes the texture and it makes the ball of mud solid gold. I. Love that. I'm actually currently shiny hunting. It's my I just got my shiny charm and now I'm I'm hatching for a shiny Relor. Because that's awesome. I love that. And I also love that for the evolution, for Rabska, they decided to go with like the super mystical because in, in a lot of cultures, dung beetles or scarab beetles have a lot of um, mythical significance. You know, they're they're they have connections to the gods and, and to the afterlife. And they played that up in this design and they did it so well. I love this design. I love that the shiny is gold. But it's so cool and it's so weird. And I love the whole thing about how the, the real body is inside the orb. But it's such a great marriage of real world, real world mythology, uh, real life animals, and then that Pokemon element of characterization. Oh, I love it. And I love the patterns on its back. Definitely want this shiny. Definitely gonna use it a lot. Awesome. Yeah, bugs really have been great. They've been given some great bugs in the past couple of gens. It looks like a womb. Yeah, it does, which is totally intentional because they were saying that the body is in there. You know, it's got that cosmic horror kind of thing going on. I love it, fantastic. Fortress. Look at that shiny. Look at that shiny. As soon as I saw Fortress and I saw how metallic it looks, you know, it really has that metallic sheen to it. I was like, oh my God, I need the shiny. Because I knew it's shiny was always supposed to be gold, but it never looked gold, right? Because they didn't have that metallic-y texture. And it looks even better in the overworld. In the Pokedex, it, the light, reflective light isn't as great. Oh, but it's actually gold, and it looks so good! Oh, I love it! Oh, what a great shiny. Oh, huge, huge W for shiny hunters with these new textures. Um, you know, I've always liked Fortress. I never loved it. Now I love it. Now that it looks like this, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'll show it in the overworld. Look at that. Oh. Oh, looks so good. Oh. So cool. I love the way the reflective light works in this game. Oh, beautiful. Gold textures in this game. Just massive W. Flittle. Not really my thing. Uh, but, you know, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's a bad design. I think this appeals to a completely different type of group, a uh, different type of demographic than me. Though I gotta say, this evolution caught me completely off guard. And again, I love that. I love when a sh uh, an evolution in a, of a Pokemon can just blow my mind. and like, okay, I would have never expected that. And I encountered this evolution, uh, what is it called? Espartha? I encountered this, um... And I didn't realize it was the evolution. And I, I did piece it together. I was like, wait a minute. I bet that evolves into that. Because you can see it, right? It's got the frills. It's got the colors. 
But I love that. I mean, it's it's so weird and it's so strange. But this is like the opposite of what I was talking about of like add-on syndrome where like, you know, you could just make this like a bigger little like ballet girl. But like when you first look at it, you think, oh, it's just a ballet girl. But then you're like, oh, it's like a little chick. And then you don't really realize that until you see the fashionista Lady Gaga ostrich. Um, I love this thing. Uh, I don't know what a shiny look like looks like, but it's... Oh, it was shiny? What does the shiny look like? Oh, because I kind of... If the shiny is good, I might I might go for it because I like this one a lot. Tinka Tink. Now, this line, I had no idea what to expect from this. My, my friends and I were calling it like the caveman line. But what I love about this line is that it's doing something new with the fairy type. And I love that. First form, I didn't love. Second form, I was so conflicted. I was like, I, I don't know how to feel about this. Now, of course, the first thing that came into my mind was Poppy from League of Legends, because it really looks like Poppy with the big ponytail and the giant hammer. But I kept going back and forth because I liked how weird it was. And I liked how it wasn't just... It wasn't anything. It was a completely original concept. And it works really well. Um, and it's it's it stands out as a good, strong three-stage line. And then when I saw the final form, I was like, holy shit, I really like this. I like this a lot. Um, I mean, what great contrast, right? Like, you don't see that a lot in Pokemon designs. You know, one aspect of it is soft and pink and feminine and cutesy. And then the other aspect of it is giant and metal and hard and sharp and jagged. And they work so well together. It's and Amy Rose, yeah, a little bit too. The fucker upper, it really is. Um, and, oh, is it the tiny hammer is incorporated in each stage? Like it's building onto it. Oh yeah, I can see the middle stage in there. Oh, and then the first one is in there. Oh, that's really cool. I didn't notice that. I like it. Yeah, the shiny has just like a bronze hammer. People were saying that it's made out of shiny Corviknight, but shiny Corviknight is silver, so it doesn't really look like a shiny Corviknight. Uh, but I know that its hammer is made out of parts of Corviknight, which is dark as fuck, but um, I like it. Uh, fantastic. Great fairy type, great steel type. Wiglet! I mean, I think we all kind of feel the same way about Wiglet. It was like clickbait. It was like... The entire Pokemon company was like, people are going to either love or hate this thing. And I love it. Um, I think it's adorable. I think the evolution... <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I look at it. Um, I also love how dark its entry is. It has a vicious temperament. Of course, look at this thing. Of course it's vicious. Contrary to what its appearance may suggest, it wraps its long bodies around prey, then drags it into its den. Among Us. Oh, I didn't even see that, but of course, it's an Among Us. Um, I like it. I love the colors, and I love the texture. Um, I like how this one isn't just Doug Trio. Um, I like the Convergent Evolutions. I think that's a cool concept. Um, I like it a lot. This thing really threw me off. Bombardier. Now, I like how, with the other flying types in this gen, it has a standing form and a, a flying form. The concept, of course, of like a stork delivering babies. Such a strange concept to make into a Pokemon, but I don't hate it. I, I... The only problem I have with it is it just looks weird when it pulls that flap up into its mouth. Um... I, I like everything else about it. It's just that flap looks kind of weird. I also like that it just likes dropping things on people. I like that's its personality. Yeah, what if a delivery stork was a jerk? Um, but I do like it. It's well designed. Um, it's just a little strange, but I do like it. Okay, let me talk about Finizen. I love this concept so much. And... Me, as I'm sure a lot of other people who didn't look at spoilers. Again, another reason why I always say don't look at spoilers beforehand. Because when you evolve Finizen, it doesn't look like it evolves at all. Like, I saw Finizen and I thought, oh, it's really cute. I can't wait to see what its evolution looks like. I evolved it and I actually didn't realize that you had to be in a union room to evolve it. I was just was playing with Claire at the time when it evolved. 
Um, but I like that little detail too. But then I evolved it, and like so many people, I was like, I was like so excited. I like got Claire over. I was like, let's see, what does it look like when it evolves? And I was like, wait, what? It didn't change at all. And I was like, oh wait, there's a heart on its chest. And then I saw the Pokedex. And I read the description. And it's so brilliant, guys, because I knew right away how I got it to change form. Actually, I, I didn't know right away. I actually thought that one of your Pokemon had to faint or get low before it switched out. Um, but <laughs> it's such a cool idea. I, I like texted all my friends when I evolved this and I was like, you got to evolve your Finizen because it's just, it was such a cool experience to have that for the first time and not know right away. But yeah, it can't see, it can't let other people see it changing form. I, I think it's great. I think it's brilliant. Um, you know, I think if it just evolved into this, I might not like it as much, um, but the concept behind it makes me love it so much more. Ugh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if it's like busted and competitive. I, I again, I don't really care. Um, but I also love how its armor is made out of bubbles. Um, I think that's very clever. Okay, Varum. I love this thing. I love this thing, man. Again, so creative. Me and my friend, actually, when we were in high school, designed a car engine Pokemon, and it sucked. It didn't look anything like this. Um, but this is such a creative design. I mean, people always complain about how inanimate Pokemon designs are lazy. I could not disagree more. I think designing a car engine into a Pokemon is so much more challenging than doing, like, a dragon Pokemon or a crocodile Pokemon. And this, I don't have this shiny. I know it is golden, the shiny, and I kind of want it um, because it is golden, but I don't have the shiny yet. And Reverum, again, uh, first of all, I love the name. So cute. And I love how the rest of the body, like, I feel like it could be standalone, just the engine. Um, I feel like I, I almost wish it didn't have the, the rock parts because I really love the way the engine looks. Um... But again, I mean, this is really clever. I, you know, I might be in the minority thinking that, but I love how it's like, it's got two mouths and it's a poison type. You know, it's goofy, but it's also scary. Like, and I love how this was tied into the story as like the villain's main Pokemon and you battled a fucking car. Um, but... I think it's a really cool design. I think it's really clever. Um, I'm a big fan. Cyclozar. Again, we got some more uh, motor Pokemon. Now, I think this Pokemon was designed more to contextualize the legendaries, obviously, as we all know. Um, I actually don't love it as much as I wish I did. Um, but I like the role that it plays in the world. Um, I think... Pokemon is thinking about its character designs the way more games think about character designs. You know, they're, they're, the monsters are not just filler to, you know, use in battle. They actually play a role in the world. And that's kind of new to Pokemon, and I really like it. Um, and obviously, like, Cyclozer um, is, uh, is one of those Pokemon. So I like it for that. <laughs> this thing... Totally caught me off guard. This being one of the Titans, I think is such a cute idea because the Titans up until this point were like, well, at least in the order that I did them, were like terrifying looking. And then all of a sudden this fucking doofy ass motherfucker comes out of the ground. And yeah, I like that it looks like a train, right? Like it goes through the tunnels. I like that the little arms come out. Again, it doesn't show that in the, in the Pokedex entry. I don't know why. It's doofy as all hell, but it owns it, you know? It's one of those goofy-ass Pokemon that wants to be goofy, and I love it. Now, Glimmit, another Pokemon that they really considered how this would look in the overworld. And I love that, because this is the first time we've really had that privilege in the, the world of Pokemon games where 
the environments and the Pokemon kind of go hand in hand, and you actually see them living in their own world. Now, Glimmit, not so much, but Glamora, when it roots itself into the rocks, and it's like a flower sticking out of the rocks, that's so cool. That is so cool. It is such a cool idea, and I mean, it stands alone as a very strange and very cool and like, you know, definitely end game kind of Pokemon, but especially when you see it in the rocks with its head buried into the rocks and just the flower parts sticking out. That's so cool. Again, you know, if you saw this Pokemon just from the leaks and you saw it as just a screenshot, you would think, oh, this looks weird. This doesn't look cool. But when you see it the way the creators intended you to see it, you know, in its environment, in that cave in Area Zero, all of a sudden, the concept behind its design becomes so clear. And I did too. The first time I saw it was battling La Primera. Um, oh, so cool. I really like this. My friend just got a shiny. I actually got two shinies. Rotom. Everyone loves Rotom. Oh, okay, another dog. So many dogs. I like Revert a lot. Um, I didn't like it as much when I first saw it, but I like it more and more. Its Pokedex entry is the saddest fucking thing in the world. It is said that a dog Pokemon that died in the wild without ever interacting with a human was reborn as this Pokemon. What the hell? They had no right making it that sad. It's so sad. It's also really funny seeing the words dog Pokemon in a canonical Pokemon setting. Like, okay, we're just admitting that these Pokemon look like dogs, but there are no dogs. They're just these. It's just really funny. Now, Houndstone. Insane. I did not think Greenbird was going to have an evolution. When I saw this thing in the wild, I was actually a little scared. I was like, wait, this is kind of terrifying. And it pops out of the ground. It's so creepy, but it's great. Um, I mean, I also love that it's constantly wagging its tail. Like, it's so creepy, but it's happy. Um, I love this. I, fantastic. Um, you know, we don't really see a lot of bony Pokemon, like explicitly skeletal Pokemon, but I think it's done really well here. I, I love this a lot. The more I look at it, the more I like it. Oh yeah, the animations. Again, it doesn't show all of them in the Pokedex, which is disappointing, but I like this a lot. Houndstone is the name of an actual town near you. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> Flamigo! This was an interesting one. I saw this thing, and I was like, again, I was like, wow, they're padding out the decks this gen. They just wanted to have a few more extra Pokemon in there. And honestly, I don't mind it. I think it's cute. I like how it looks like a pool floaty and in, and a, uh, like a lawn toy. But I also love that it's a fighting type, and that it ties the base of its neck into a knot, so that energy stored in its belly does not escape from its beak. So strange. Um, oh, yeah, and it's a boxing glove. Look at that. I never even realized that, but it does. It looks like a boxing glove. I like it. It's very cute. I really didn't think Satitan would have a first form. Uh, when I saw this fucking thing waddling around, of course I knew right away it was Satitan's first form. And I was like, God damn it. That thing's adorable. Puntable, as we're saying. Um, you could definitely kick the shit out of this thing. I love it. It's so cute. I love its eyeliner. And of course, the Titan. Awesome. I love this so much. What a cool concept for a Pokemon. Um, I love everything about it. I love that it's almost predominantly white. You know, it's almost entirely white, actually, I should say. I love its eyes. I love the little specks of pink. I love the shiny. Yeah, that, that shiny is so good. I'm going to be seeing that a lot. Um, this is great. I, as soon as I saw this Pokemon, I knew I had reason to be excited for for a Gen 9, and I really did. This was fantastic. Ponyard. I've never really liked Ponyard. I mean, it, I didn't dislike Ponyard. I never disliked Ponyard, but I never gave this line any thought until this. I love this. Again, I never really liked Bisharp that much, but this is awesome. I... I also love the One Piece is real. It is, it is, uh, 
uh, what is it, Silverbeard or whatever his name is? I don't, I hadn't got to that part in One Piece. But yeah, such a cool concept. It's a chess piece. It's a shogun. It's, a, I love the concept behind its ability, how you have to evolve it by making it the best Bisharp in the area. It's Whitebeard. Yeah, that's his name. I, <laughs> I love it. I love how it sits on its own hair like it can't be bothered to stand up. It doesn't even walk. It just floats around like it's not going to stand up. This is King Gambit. This thing doesn't stand up. It You will come to it and it will chop you in f***ing half with its head. And of course, again, I love the gold texture. This is on my gold team. Um, I love the texture of it. I actually, I've seen the shiny. I don't like the shiny. I like it better with the red coloring. Um, but I love this a lot. Such a cool idea. Um, yeah, it floats around. I, I absolutely love it. I, I love, too, when you wash it, it, like, dusts itself off. It, like, brushes its legs. Ugh, I love this. King Gambit is fantastic. Vault in Veluzas. How do you change its form? Because I know it has a form where, like, the parts of it, like, break off. And, like, because it, like, lets people eat it. Um, I This was another one where I was, like, completely caught me off guard. Um, but I, I, I've never seen the other form of it. Um, oh, Filet Away is the... Oh, that's great. That's a great name for a move. Oh, man. Oh, I love it. Um... Yeah, I love how many Pokemon, because food is so prominent in this region, I love how many Pokemon they made edible, but you don't have to kill them to eat them. They were just like, no, Falooza likes to take chunks of its body off. It helps it go faster. You can just eat them. They're delicious. Toad's cool too, I think. It just, parts of it fall off and you can just eat them. And they taste delicious. Like, I love how they did that because people always say that. They're like, oh, can you eat Pokemon? Yeah, you can. Parts of them just fall off and you can eat them. Oh, I love that. Now, Dondozo. One of my favorite Pokemon from this gen. Another food-based Mon. Such a cool concept. I love the way it looks. I love how terrifying it is to encounter in the wild. Like, seeing it under the water. That's, like, one of my biggest fears is, like, giant things lurking in the water. This thing in the water. Terrifying. And, yeah, this was a shiny. I was not hunting for it, but I did want it. Great shiny. Love this shiny. And I absolutely love this Pokemon. I love big fish. That's just a weak spot for me with designs. Um, it, it, it's great. I absolutely love it. Such a cool concept. And these little fuckers. Such a cool idea. I love everything about this idea. This concept uh, that they use themselves as bait to catch bigger prey. Ugh. Yeah, it's like a Wells catfish. Yeah. Uh, such a great design. Their sushi. It's the the chef. It's got the little sushi head wrap. Oh, I love this whole line. Awesome. Big W. I love these little guys. Oh. And I love how all of their... They have different shinies for each form. Because each form does something different. With the signature move uh, of Don Dozen. Such a cool... I love double battle gimmicks. This is a great one. I don't know how busted it is, but um, I do love the concept behind it. This is one of my favorite of the Paradox forms. So cool. I kind of want a shiny hunt for this one because the shiny is really cool looking. I love it. Like, dinosaur, dragon, elephant. Such a cool concept. Um, big fan. I'm really glad I chose Scarlet because I don't like the the Iron Treads as much. But now we're in the Paradoxes. So, Screamtail. Love this one. Uh, really. This is really cute. And really great. I love how it, like, this is the first one you encounter in, uh, in the, uh, in Area Zero, and, and Penny runs up to it, and she's like, look how cute, and then it, like, goes for the kill. I love it. Makes me like Jigglypuff a lot more. 
This, I like. I don't love Amoongus, but what is this one called? Brute Bonnet? I do like this. I think this fixes all of the problems I have with Amoongus. Even the weird lips things. Now it's like a weird beak. It's still weird, but I like it. Oonga Boongus. It really is Oonga Boongus. But I like it. I like how it keeps the, the Pokeball thing. It's very interesting because uh, in this game, they explain how Pokeballs were designed after Amoongus. Rather the other, than the other way around. Because this has existed before Pokeballs existed. Um, so, that's cool. I love the like curtain of bioluminescent moss. This is really cool. Uh, I like how they decided that like prehistoric Pokemon don't have to all be dinosaurs. Like, yeah, there are prehistoric ghosts. You know, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison of Earth. You know, it's it's just the Pokemon world. There's some weird shit happened in the past. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. They're the the they're not all. Final forms, and Mistrevious, Mistrevious is one of those. I love the asymmetry in this one, too. Just a dash of asymmetry. You don't see that a lot in Pokemon designs, but I really like it. Oh, love this one. So cool. I'm gonna shiny hunt this one, too, because I absolutely love it. So cool. I mean, it's a dinosaur moth. I Can it get any cooler than that? It's cute. It's cool. I love the shapes. I love the colors. Slitherwing. Oh, so cool. Absolutely love this one. This one was very strange to me. Prehistoric magnets. But you know what? Again, it's creative. I would have never thought of this. And I appreciate that they tried it. And I like how they used like little shards of metallic fragments that are stuck to the magnets as like a spiny shape. And I also like how it has like a punk rock thing going on. Um... Yeah, they're, yeah, they're weak magnets. It's, it's cool. I like it a lot. I like the, uh, yeah, ferrofluid. Is that what it's called? Yeah, like the bits of magnetic fragments inside a fluid and it spikes up like that. It's a cool idea. Uh, yeah, again, iron treads, I don't like as much. That's just a personal thing. I think it's a cool design. Um, and again, it's like so unlike anything we've seen in Pokemon. All of the, the future forms are. Because um, they're like explicitly robots. We don't really see that so much in Pokemon. So I appreciate that that change. And of course, it it works well for the concept of, of uh, Donphan, right? Because it rolls around like a wheel. Um, this is adorable. Absolutely love this thing. What is it called? Iron Bundle. You know, you would have never seen this one coming, but I love it, and I love that it's around Christmas time too because it makes me think of tree ornaments. So cute. I love seeing a little Deli Bird love because I've always liked Deli Bird, but it's, and again, it's one of those Pokemon that's sort of just been... No one's really paid attention to it. It shoots its head off? Really? Oh, I've never seen that. Oh, I'll have to, I'll have to use it in a battle. Again, I don't like Hariyama, so I don't really love this. But it's... whatever. It is what it is. Again, kind of the same thing here. Like, I don't like Hydreigon, so I don't love this. But I do think it's cl clever. It's creative. It makes sense because Hydreigon has always sort of been like a mobile weapon. Um, so this makes sense. Again, this probably has cool animations that I haven't seen. And I like how its head lights up. Don't hate it. Don't love it. This one, again, like, compared to Slitherwing. What is this one called? Iron Moth? Yeah, like, it's cool, but I like Slitherwing better. This is cool. I like this one. This one's probably my favorite future Paradox form. I love the spikes, the way they come out like that. And I also love how it reminds me of Mecha um, Tyranitar from the uh, the Pokemon Movie Maker in black and white. Um, I thought that was a fun little reference there. This one's cool. I like this one. And then we got the pseudo legendary. I'm assuming this is the pseudo legendary of this gen. I gotta say, 
I was very excited when I saw this, and I was excited when I evolved it, and then I was disappointed with the final form. I like the, like, classic kaiju, um, you know, like, man in a costume Godzilla kind of thing we got going on here. I think I was just disappointed because I expected something else. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I'm a little disappointed with this one. You know, Ice Dragon, kind of a cool typing, but the design itself, like, I see where they were going with this. I like how its attack, is it, like, slides on its head towards you with its sword back? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's close to something I would like, but I was disappointed with this. Now, Gimme Ghoul. I didn't know I didn't know what they were going for initially with Gimme Ghoul, but I gotta say again, I really really love how they designed a Pokemon just for the open world exploration based side of this game, because that's a big part of what makes an open world exploration based game fun is being able to find little secrets here and there, and this is a Pokemon designed around that mechanic. And that is fantastic. I really love that. Oh, you guys are just using these on cooldown, aren't you? Thank you for the hand stretch. Panko Cam, I don't think I can do right now. I don't know where Panko is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have turned Panko Cam off for this because um, I usually do that when I have my iPad and I can just sh take my iPad and show the camera. Um, but I'm using my corded... Uh, webcam right now, so I can't take it into the other room where Panko is. Panko, you want to come in here? And I can't call her because I think she's asleep. Panko, are you asleep? Panko! Well, if she comes out, I'll put her on cam for you. But anyway, yeah. Gimme Ghoul is great. I didn't think it was going to have an evolution. But I love this thing so much. And again, it really... It really does a great job of of making you feel rewarded for exploration. Now, of course, I can't... It doesn't show the animation, but when it's on the water, it has a surfboard, and I love that. It's so cute. Yeah, a surfboard of coins. Oh, I love this thing. Of course, you know, I love the gold texture. Going on, going on the gold team, for sure. I think it's cute i think it's clever and it feels valuable you know it feels like a good reward for getting 999 gimme gold coins which by the way took me two weeks to do of playing this game so props to game freak made a great pokemon that also fits in with the mechanics of this new world of this new game i think it's great yeah it's got the little chest on its belt fantastic Now, the non-box legendaries, I wasn't expecting this because we didn't get them last gen. And I'm so glad they brought them back because these things are really cool. It's very interesting that they seem to be based off of Chinese mythology, but nevertheless, I love this one. I love the animations. That's like hypnotic, the way the like tablets are like sliding through. And I love the concept behind them. The Ruinous Quartet, is that what they're called? Yeah, it's so cool. I love how they're all based off of evil things that people had done and then that evil spirit manifests in inanimate objects and then gives life to more inanimate objects i i love this one a lot this one's probably my favorite actually no the fish is my favorite i have to look at these names too shen pao again so cool it's just snow but it's got that broken sword stuck in its head it's very cool it's very clever I, I really like it. And then this one, again, so cool. It really feels legendary, you know? Sometimes legendaries don't feel legendary. These feel legendary. Yeah, yeah, they're elemental. And again, exploration-based. I love how you find these. You have to go through and find all of the hidden stakes. Again, this took me a really long time to finish. And I had to look some of them up because I could not find them. But again, I love how they worked in the mechanics of the game, the open world exploration, into rare Pokemon that feel rare. Um, very cool. Um, this one kind of has a dick, which is sort of weird. I just noticed that. It's got like a little, little thing hanging down in its crotch. Probably didn't need that. 
Um, but I love it. And then this one's probably, I think this one's my favorite. It's cute, it's cool, it's a little scary. I love the cry, too. It sounds like crackling fires. Um, yeah, and I love the typing, too. Ah, what a great legendary. Yeah, I'm a big fan of these legendaries. Oh, and then the, the final two Paradox Forms. I actually don't love this one too much. I like it conceptually. It was very interesting that they went back to, like, the Mega um, Salamence route of, like, making it just have one giant wing. Um, and uh, I, I do like it. I just I don't like its really long arms. I don't know. It's all right. I think I like regular Salamence better. And then this one, of course, this is, I mean, this is huge fan service. Uh, everyone loves Gardevoir. Everyone loves Gallade. So combine the two of them. Make an awesome uh, mecha. It's cool. I love its weapon. You know, its blade arms come off and turn into a weapon. That's very cool. Again, all of these have really cool battle animations. And I haven't seen all of them. Non-binary icon. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Bucking all the gender stereotypes, because in the future, there are no genders. Just robots. Yeah, cool. co ride on man. co fucking ride on I love this guy. This is my new favorite legendary Pokemon. And I gotta say, you know, some people were upset that you get your legendary right at the beginning of the game, but you don't really. And it makes the legendary feel so much more significant if you're bonding with it throughout the entire game. Throughout the entire game, no matter what story you're doing, you're bonding with your Koridon and you don't even battle with it. And uh, I love it because I got so attached to it by the end of the game. You know how like when you play through a Pokemon game, you get to the legendary and you're bonded with your team and you don't really want to use the legendary on your team because it kind of feels like cheating. It's like, oh, I'm just taking the super strong legendary and putting it on my team. And I'm just going to beat the Elite Four with it. That didn't happen in this game. Because you don't get it until after you beat the Elite Four. And you're already bonded with it. Because it's with you the whole time. And by the time I beat the game. I'm like, yes, please be my friend. I love you. I've been wanting to battle with you for so long. And now finally here you are. And you're cool. And you're cute. And I don't know. I just love it. Um... And yes, I've been on the fence about this getting this game, despite being a big Pokemon fan. 100% recommend it. Gotta be one of the most fun Pokemon games I think I've ever played. That's not an exaggeration. Yes, it has technical problems. You know, there are bugs. The frame rate is terrible. The graphics look iffy in some places. But the Pokemon designs are fantastic. The gameplay is great. The story is probably the best written Pokemon game story I think I've ever played. Um, the bugs are not game-breaking in my opinion. I haven't had any game crashes. Um, I'll tell you right now, if you save your game to your Switch, to your console, rather than an SD card, you don't have crashes. Claire's game crashes all the time. Mine does not. Just save it to your console. Download it to your console. Don't download it to an SD card. You won't have any game-breaking bugs. You won't have any crashes. It's just little tiny nitpicking things that if they had six more months to work on, it would have been flawless. But everything else about this game is fantastic. I'll throw Miraidon in there too. Everything good I have to say about Koridon, I can say about Miraidon too. I, personally, I don't like it as much. I like the primal aesthetic more. Um, I think it's awesome. I'm using one on my team. I don't give a shit. I know it's busted as fuck. Its ability is insanely strong. Its moves are insanely strong. Its stats are insanely strong. I don't care. I love it. I'm going to use it no matter what. Um, and, and that's it. We're back to the beginning. And we've been doing this for two hours. <laughs> um, but it's awesome. I mean, this Pokedex, in my opinion, very strong Pokedex. A lot of really good Pokemon designs. Inspiring Pokemon designs. Makes me want to draw. Um, so many Pokemon that I loved in this gen. Some new favorites. Koridon. Um, uh, uh, Golden Go. Um, Skeledurge. Some of my new favorite Pokemon. Um, I love them. I highly recommend, if you haven't played this game, definitely play it. Um, yes, it has issues. Yes, it was rushed. 
yes, I wish some things were different, but all things considered, it's a great game. It's really fun to play. So many quality of life improvements from older Pokemon games. So many fun little additions to the world of Pokemon. Great new battle mechanics. Um, I love it. Um, and that's my two cents. Um, I am going to upload this as a VOD uh, and I'm going to put it on YouTube too so other people can see it. People who weren't here to watch the live stream. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to be streaming again more regularly during December for D in December. I'm going to be drawing uh, for that challenge. I posted something on YouTube today. So I'll be drawing some more stuff. Uh, if you want to come by, hang out with me, chat about whatever, I'll be drawing here 5 p.m. EST almost every night. Be sure to check out our Patreon too. We got some great new reward tiers. It's patreon.com slash subjectively5. Be sure to check that out. Um, and that's going to be it for tonight's stream, guys. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, see you all later. Peace.